And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. When a fond husband leaves on an overseas business trip, his loving wife is apt to slip a remembrance gift into his suitcase. As our heroine Myra does in a story by Ralph Bell and Eugene Francis called The Last Trip. Here, Ted, over here. Hi, Myra. Well, it's about time. Yeah, sorry, I'm late, baby. What the devil happened? I'm going out of my mind waiting in this horrid cafeteria. Easy, easy, baby. Took me a little longer than I figured to rig up our little surprise package. Then I got stuck in a cab. Traffic is murder. Yeah, that's another thing. What makes you think they're going to let planes take off in this weather? Relax, will you? I called the airport just before I left my apartment. All overseas flights are leaving a schedule. It's only a little mess. Here, here's the package. Better get moving before Harry gets home. He's home already. What? You sure? I just phoned. He got in five minutes ago and started to pack. Now, how am I supposed to get this into his suitcase without his noticing, huh? I don't have to tell you how. He's your husband. You've never had trouble handling him up to now. Distract him somehow. Then slip the package into the suitcase, close it, and see that it stays closed till he leaves with it. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Not going to be that simple. Sure, sure it is. You can do it, Myra. Look. You still want to go on living with him? I'll tell you right now. I'll just have to fade out of the picture. You mean you'd, you'd stop seeing me? I'd leave town, that's all. All right. Give it to me. Good girl. Now, look, you don't have to be nervous about handling it. It won't go off till it's time. Hey, are you sure it'll work? It'll work, Meyer. I guarantee it. At 5 p.m. when it explodes, this plane will be well over the ocean. Now you better get going. Phone me at my apartment after he leaves, and good luck, sweetheart. Is that you, Myra? Yes, Harry. Have you packed yet, dear? Almost, dear. I'll do the rest after I finish shaving. Oh, I'll do it, Harry. I... I'd have done it before, but I was delayed shopping. Ah, uh, what'd you buy? Anything interesting? Oh, nothing really. What's in that package? Huh? Well, that package you're holding. Oh, uh, oh, this just just some shoes. Oh, really? How they look? You know you have such pretty feet, darling. Put them on. Let me see. Oh, Harry, there's no time. Now where's your suitcase? It's on the bed there. What do you want me to put in? What? Speak up, dear. I can't hear with this thing on. I said, what do you want me to put in? Oh, uh, just some handkerchiefs and socks. I've packed everything else. All right, dear. You fool. What color socks, dear? I'm wearing the gray suit. Would the uh, blue be all right? I think so, dear. Hot pot. What, dear? How many pairs? Well, just enough for three days, dear. And uh, don't forget the handkerchief. No, I'll put them right under your shirt. In your surprise package and everything else, you old goat. What, dear? I said the handkerchiefs are under your shirt, darling. Oh, thank you, dear. Now, how to get this clothes. Oh. oh, golly. Well, I'll be glad when this trip is over. Oh, so will I, dear. Oh, darling. Oh, don't bother with these suitcase, dear. I'll close it. All right. You know, I often think what my life was like before I met you. Uh. Years spent just grubbing for money. And who was there to spend it on? Uh, here I was over 50 and I hadn't really lived. A meaningless existence. And then, two years ago, Providence was merciful. You came into my life. <coughs> you gave me back my youth, Myra. Oh. Do you know that? Oh, Harry. Oh. Say, what, what, what's in here? Did I pack too much? No, no. No, let's 
put our weight on it together. Well, I could take some things out. No, come on, together. Ready? Now, push down. Oh, oh my. That'll never close. There's too much in here. Uh, I guess I'll have to take some things out. Oh, Harry. Oh, we'll take a minute. Mara, your package. What's it doing in my suitcase? Oh. Oh, the package will... Harry, darling, it, it, it was to be a surprise. A surprise? Yeah, for your birthday. My birth? But, but, Myra... It's a gift for you. I, I didn't want you to see it until you unpacked. Oh, what a pity. Now you've spoiled everything. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I, I didn't mean to. Well, you put it right back and don't open it till you arrive. Then it'll, it'll still be a surprise. Promise? Oh, I, I promise. <laughs> You're so sweet and so thoughtful. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Now, hurry. You haven't much time. Yes, dear. Now, suppose I take out these slippers of mine. That ought to make room for the package. There. Now it'll close and see. And I better lock it, too. A lot of oh. petty thievery going on lately. Can't be too careful. Oh, there we are. It's all set. See me to the door. Well, of course, dear. Now, hurry, darling. You'd be late. All right. I'll, I'll cable you as soon as I land. Yeah. And, 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 and give me a kiss. Mm. Now, goodbye, darling. And... And take care of yourself. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Goodbye. Hello, Penny. Yes. Yes, yes, he's gone. He managed it, but he nearly drove me right out of my mind. What do you mean, take it easy? You don't know what I've been through. Yes? Who is it? It may open up. Dad, what are you doing here? I told you to stay away till it's all over. It's too risky. You sounded almost hysterical, baby. Thought I'd better come over and stay with you till you calm down. I am calm down. Well, I'll stick around anyway till we get the news about the plane. As soon as we hear you're a widow, I'll take off. Suppose somebody decides to drop in. So I'll use the fire escape in the bedroom like I've done before. How about a drink? I've had one. Oh, have another. Settle your nerves. When will we know? Will you stop fretting? The explosion will happen at five on the nose. Radio will probably flash the news later this evening. Then what? Oh, Myra, we've been over this a dozen times. We sit tight till the airline calls. Then you go into your act. The shocked and bereft widow. Yeah. Only you'll have to be convincing. Oh, that won't be easy. It'll be such a relief to know I'm finally rid of him. One thing worries me, though. Here's your drink. What worries you? Suppose the plane's only damaged and it manages to, to turn back and land. Oh, not a chance. There's enough blast in that little package to knock over a house. You can imagine what it'll do to a plane 10,000 feet up. Come on. Drink up, Myra. Wait, wait, wait. A toast. To Harry, our benefactor. To his last trip. Let's turn on the radio, huh? You know, I can't help feeling a little sorry for those other plane passengers. Well, that's very humanitarian of you, Myra. But like I've always said, some must die so that others may live in clover. That's a basic fact of life. <laughs> You're very necessary to me, Ted. I mean emotionally. Really? Why? Yeah. You're such an unadulterated heel, you make me feel almost respectable. And you're such a charming hypocrite. You make me feel like an honest man. Almost. <laughs> oh, we're a dandy team. And now, the late afternoon news. The weather's making headlines again today. The slight haze that's hung over the city for the past two days thickened late this afternoon and developed into heavy smog. Hey, turn that up. The smog has been caused by a heavy, congested, smoke-filled atmosphere that is imprisoned over the city by damp, immobile air. Meanwhile, all flights have been canceled at city airports and motor traffic is moving at a snail's pace. 
motorists are warned to drive with extreme caution. President Eisenhower held a press conference today. Dead. Dead. Yeah. You spoke. Go on. Say it. Valerie's flight has been canceled. In just a moment, we will return for the second act of Suspense. Bonjour, I am Jacques Leroy, expert on the stereophonic phonograph. I will now clear up this whole subject. Uh, S'il vous plaît, listen to ordinary stereo. A girl crossing the street. Eh bien, now on Columbia Stereo One. Ah, oh, that was a pretty girl crossing the street. Quelle différence! The fantastic Columbia Stereo One phonograph gives you all the realism and excitement of a live performance. What in a moment, mademoiselle? Oh, la la. Oh, uh, pardon. You see, only Columbia has exclusive stereo projection. Not just a few uh, separated speakers, I know, but multiple speakers that send interlocking circles of sound through every inch of a room. Uh, see the Columbia phonograph man to sweet. Columbia stereo one portable start at thirty nine ninety five. Consoles from one twenty nine ninety five. Attendez, ma chérie. Wait for me. <laughs> That haze, will you? It didn't seem so bad when I was on my way over here. If his plane didn't take off, where do you suppose Harry is now? I don't care where Harry is. Where's his suitcase? If it explodes while he's carrying it around, we're really in the soup. There'll be an investigation. It'll lead right back here. Well, what do we do? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me think. This is a fine time to think, genius. Why didn't you think before? Now, wait, Myra. The weather report said slight haze. The airline said they were operating a regular schedule. Nobody could figure they'd be smart. Nobody could figure. You were smart enough to figure everything else. Why couldn't you figure this right now? All right, all right, I didn't. Now, will you shut up for a minute? Wait. Wait, wait. Maybe we're jumping to conclusions. We're not sure his plane was grounded. So how do we find out? Oh, me if... On answer. Hello. Can you tell me if Y three seven seven took off on schedule? Yeah, I'll hold on. Hello. What? Oh. Thank you. You see, we panicked over nothing. Plane took off ten minutes late, but it took off. Oh, oh what a relief. I'm sorry, Ted. That's all right, baby. For a moment there, it felt like the whole world was falling in on us. Uh, Say, I could use another drink. You? Yeah. Hey, who can that be? I don't know. Where are you going? To the bedroom. I'll wait out on the fire escape till you get rid of whoever it is. Close the door. Okay. Coming. Who is it? It's me, dear. Harry. Open up, dear. What happened? Why aren't you on that plane? Mara, you won't believe it. Wait until you hear. Uh, close the door, dear. Harry, for heaven's sakes, what happened? Well, my cab got stuck in an awful traffic jam, and the fog or the smog or whatever it is kept getting heavier every minute. Traffic was just crawling. And finally it occurred to me that even if the cab got me to the airport on time, all flights would probably be canceled. So... But your plane took off. Oh, did? Well, how do you know? Well, I... I called the airport. Oh, now, how do you like that? I probably could have made it after but all. Where you been all this time? I went back to the office, sent a cable that I'd be a day late. You left your suitcase in the office? What? Your suitcase. Did you leave it in your office? Well, no, of course not. Well, where is it? Why, <laughs> isn't that foolish of me? I left it outside the door. <laughs> I'd better bring it in. Ah, here we are. I'll just leave it in the corner here. There's no point in unpacking. I'll be going first thing tomorrow. What time is it? Uh, let me see. Uh, it's quarter to five. More or less. Well, what do you mean, more or less? 
My watch may be a little slow. Uh, look, Harry, let's go out to dinner tonight, huh? Well, it's not very pleasant outside. Do well, I, I don't care. I just don't feel like cooking in tonight. Let's let's eat early right now and, and go to a movie or something, huh? Well, if you really want yeah, to. Yeah, I'll go fix my face. W why don't you mix a drink for us while I get ready? All right. Th there's soda in the kitchen. I'll, I'll be ready in a minute. Mara! What? Put down that suitcase. Well, why I'm taking the bedroom. It, it clatters up the room here. For heaven's sake, you'll strain yourself. That's too heavy, boy. Think of no, me. No, I can manage that. Don't fuss, Harry. Make the drink, huh? Well, all right. But if you strain yourself, Myra... <sighs> in the kitchen. Get in here. I've got the suitcase. Okay. What do you want me to do? What do I want you to do? Take the bomb out and get it out of here. Yeah, okay, okay. Harry, you've got less than 15 minutes before it goes off. I know, I know. Oh, great. What's the matter? It's locked. Where's the key? Harry's got it. I'll have to break the lock then. How will I explain that? No, wait. I've got a better idea. What? Take the suitcase. Get rid of it in the river. It's only a block away. You'll have time. Yeah, but how can I take it down? All the... right. All right, all right. Hit me. What? Yeah, hit me in the face. Then take the suitcase. I'll wait till you get down the fire escape. Then I'll call for help. I'll tell Harry there was a thief that he, that he knocked me unconscious before I could scream. Yeah, but Myra... Don't argue. Do as I say. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Hard now. Hard enough to leave a mark. It's got to be convincing. Go on. All right. <clears throat> okay, Myra. I'll be in touch. In just a moment, we will return for the concluding act of... Suspense. Meet star Stuart Irwin. Nothing's worse for an actor than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute, add water, lather one minute, then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. Help! Help! Harry, help! Where is the old fool? Harry! Myra! Myra, what is it? Oh, Harry. What's happened? Oh, oh here, let me help you out. Uh, Look at your face. What on a earth? A man, he, he must have come in from the fire escape. He, he struck me before I could scream. Good Lord. I saw him take his suitcase before I passed out. Oh, I better call the police. Uh, uh, are you all right? Shall I call a doctor? No, no, it's, it's just a bruise. Well, you better lie down. I, I'll uh, be right back. Uh, hello, operator. I, I want to report a robbery. Hurry, please. Now, Myra, Myra, you should lie down. I'm all right, I tell you. Oh, now, who can that be? I'll get it. Yeah, what is it? Harry Jason's residence? Yes. Detective Sergeant Duran, 28th Precinct. Oh, I was just calling you fellas. Yeah? What about it? Well, a man just broke into our apartment from the fire escape. He struck my wife and got away with a suitcase. Uh, you better come in, officer. Just a minute. Is this your suitcase, Mr. Jason? Oh, no. 
Oh, yes, it is, Myra. Oh, oh, it's definitely my suitcase, Sergeant. You see, there are my initials, uh, H.J. Uh-huh. Hey, Keen, bring him in here. Close the door. This the man who assaulted you, lady? Well, I, I can't be sure. I didn't get a good look. Can you identify him, Mr. Jason? Well, no, Sergeant. I didn't see him at all. I was in the kitchen when it happened. What makes you think he's the one? Somebody from across the way called to report there was a man lurking on your fire escape. We got here just as he was coming down, carrying your suitcase. He started to run, and we called him. Please, what time is it? Time? Oh, it's about five. I mean, exactly. Exactly. I got, uh, four minutes to five. Why? Oh, uh, no reason. I, uh, I'm just confused. The, the shock... Oh, sure, sure, I understand. Now, if you folks will come down to the station and file charges... Now? Sure, I might as well get over with. Well, well, why don't you all go ahead? I'll join you as soon as I, I make myself more presentable. No, that's all right, ma'am. We'll wait for you. No hurry. But I... I, I don't feel well. My my face is... I, uh, it sure looks a mess. Uh, meaning no offense, ma'am. Maybe uh, you better bring her down later, Mr. Jason. Okay, you pick up the suitcase. No. What do you mean, no? You wanted it so bad you lugged it down the fire escape. Now you can lug it down to the station. Pick it up. Go on. Wait. Listen to me. There's a time bomb in there. It's set to go off in less than four minutes. If we don't get away from here, we'll all be blown to pieces. What are you, a comedian? Pick up that suit. It's the truth, I tell you. You gotta believe me. How do you know there's a bomb in there? His wife put it there. He's crazy, officer. I don't even know this man. We were in it together. It was supposed to blow up on the plane. No, 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 no. Open that suitcase. I'll defuse the bomb before it's too late. Will you hurry? I don't understand. You mean there's actually a... Relax, bo- Mr. Jason. You know there's no bomb in there. He's pulling some kind of store. I'm not. I swear it. All right. I'll go along with the gag. We'll just sit here for five minutes and see if your bomb goes off. One thing I can't stand is a two-bit crook that's a wise guy. He's telling the truth. Harry, open it. Myra. Give him the key, Harry, quick. Where's the key, Mr. Jason? The key? The key to the suitcase. Have you got it? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Here, here. Yeah, give me it. Where'd you put it, Myra? Under his shirt. Where is it? Not there. If, uh, you're referring to my birthday present, Myra, dear... You're quite right. It's not in my suitcase. But... You see, Myra, my dear, I was so touched this afternoon when for the first time in our whole married life you remembered I had a birthday. In fact, it was the first birthday gift you'd ever given me. So on my way to the airport, I couldn't resist seeing what it was. Imagine my surprise when I recognized its somewhat lethal nature. It wasn't my idea, Harry. Honest, At first, I was somewhat stunned. And then all your little maneuvers, your adroit little lies in the past, began to fall into place. I took your gift to Sergeant Duran here. And then we drove over and waited outside the house until we saw your friend arrive. We evolved a little stratagem to get a confession from you both. And now that we have it, Sergeant, I think you'd better get him out of here. Sure, Mr. Jason. Okay, let's go, you two. Oh, uh, Myra, one thing more. My birthday actually occurred last month. It's a pity you never remembered the date. Or rather, how lucky. <laughs> The Last Trip, written for suspense by Ralph Bell and Eugene Francis. Heard in tonight's story were Ralph Bell, Connie Lemke, Eugene Francis, and Bob Dryden. Suspense is produced and directed by Paul Roberts. Listen again next week when we return with The Companion, a story of jealousy and jewels, written by Walter Black, 
Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. On CBS Radio...